infantry fighting vehicle. Powerful, fast, mobile, and absolutely deadly. Infantry fighting vehicles are the ultimate in technology. Protecting soldiers in battle, capable of punishing firepower, able to go virtually anywhere. In modern combat, they are the armored chariots of battle. Modern combat, fast, violent, lethal. The threats posed to infantry and other combat soldiers are incredible. Bullets, shrapnel, IEDs, all can kill in a heartbeat. Infantry need protection, real good protection. From this need was born the armored systems known as infantry fighting vehicles, capable of carrying six to 10 fully outfitted infantry. These are the ultimate in armored protection. Purpose built to be fast, mobile, and to provide direct fire support to soldiers. They have evolved into incredible machines, far more capable than other vehicles like APCs. Their roots go back to World War I and the horrors of trench warfare. Nineteen seventeen, the German and Allied armies were in a deadly stalemate along the Western Front. Artillery and machine guns were mowing down infantry before they could reach objectives. The Allies were desperate for a solution. They had already launched tanks which made an impact in the fighting. But now, they needed to protect the soldiers. The solution was to extend the Mark series of tanks, allowing room inside for 16 soldiers. The idea was good, but the tanks were not. Exhaust fumes coupled with the pitch and roll of the tank made the soldiers sick. So sick, they couldn't move forward during an attack. Eventually, this concept was abandoned. But the idea was sound, and the Germans picked up on it. 1939, the Germans employed blitzkrieg tactics, also known as lightning fast, aggressive attacks using tanks, artillery, infantry, and aircraft in a concerted effort. Key to this new tactic, mobility and protection for infantry. Taking soldiers into battle surrounded by armor. Within a few years, all armies are producing various types of armored carriers for their infantry. Some are more successful than others. But all armies recognize the need to protect soldiers when taking them into battle. It was during the Cold War years that armored protection for infantry really took hold. APCs, such as the popular M113 tracked vehicle, were seen in armies around the world. Known as battle taxis, they were light fast, 
and capable of limited protection for troops. The Soviets were about to change everything with their radical new designs. The first true infantry fighting vehicle was the Soviet BMP-1, which surprised Western intelligence analysts when it appeared in 1967. The BMP possessed a very low profile and was armed with both a 73mm smoothbore gun and AT-3 Sager anti-tank missiles. NATO military leaders scrambled to find a suitable answer to this new weapon system. The result is a family of new generation vehicles such as the M2 Bradley. Modern coalition infantry fighting vehicles are well-armed troop carriers that allow the soldiers inside to fight from within the vehicle. They feature heavier armament than earlier APCs and typically are armed with a 20 millimeter or larger autocannon and possibly with anti-tank missiles. Infantry fighting vehicles are both tracked and wheeled vehicles each mode having specific strengths and weaknesses. Specifically equipped IFVs have taken on some of the roles of light tanks. They are used by reconnaissance organizations, and light IFVs are used by airborne units, which must be able to fight without the heavy firepower of tanks. In recent combat in Iraq and Afghanistan, they have truly proven their worth. When utilized with main battle tanks, supporting artillery and aircraft, they're an effective and lethal battlefield asset. In times of asymmetrical warfare and for urban combat zones, the IFV is more important than ever. The IFV offers a viable compromise between mobility, protection, and firepower. They can be used in both high and low intensity conflicts, as well as peacekeeping operations. Today, they're the ultimate armored chariots of battle. Infantry fighting vehicles have evolved dramatically over the past three decades, adapting to ever-changing threat environments. It's their changing technology that has really made a profound difference on battlefields. Armored fighting vehicles are extremely important. They, they, first of all, they bring firepower. And um, unless you are on the ground, you don't understand how intimidating that, that weapon platform is. And of course, you never want to be on the receiving end of either a Bradley or Abrams, because that would mean that you're sitting in a, a vehicle and about three kilometers away, somebody has you in their sights or has the vehicle to your right or left in your sights. And the first time you know that you're in harm's way is when the vehicle to your right or left explodes in a fireball. It's not a good place to be. They bring tremendous capabilities. The fourth generation for looking at infrared thermal sights on both the Bradley and the Abrams, they're unmatched. And they give our platforms phenomenal reconnaissance and observation uh, capabilities through all, both limited visibility, daylight, uh, obscurant smokes. It really is a phenomenal platform. The other uh, advantage is it provides protection to the, uh, the soldiers. If we couple that with good tactics, the casualty rates in our current uh, conflicts are historically the lowest they've ever been. And part of that is because the equipment we have is the best that money can buy and American ingenuity can, can produce. Infantry fighting vehicles are tasked with numerous tactical roles. One of their principal functions is within a mechanized battalion. Here, their mobility, protection, and firepower add a great deal to a deployed mechanized battalion. Well, right now, we're set up in a security position. We're in a patrol base right now. Uh, we need to have 360 security in order to ensure that we protect our forces. The main concern is that we protect our uh, 
command posts where we get all the information and push it out to the troops so they can then go on their uh, combat patrols. Bradley has a better tactical advantage because uh, obviously in addition to the firepower and the armored capability, you can also carry additional troops into the fight, which obviously adds to uh, your combat effectiveness. So you have that dismounted capability and um, extra set of eyes. The thermal sights, which uh, give you that extra advantage that the enemy doesn't necessarily have in uh, the current operating environment. Infantry fighting vehicles have evolved as combat has. The Bradley, named after the famous World War II general Omar N. Bradley, was the first in the NATO family tree of infantry fighting vehicles. The M2 Bradley Track IFV. Weight, 27.6 tons. Armor, steel plating with spaced laminate and reactive armor attachments. Crew, three. Troop carrying capacity, six. Main gun, M242 25 millimeter chain gun. Machine gun, M240 7.62 millimeter. Engine, Cummins VTA 903 eight cylinder diesel, producing 600 horsepower. Operational range, 500 kilometers or 300 miles. Top speed, 66 kilometers or 41 miles per hour. Built in the United States of America. First of all, uh, one thing I really like about the Bradley is that it's an armored vehicle, so you can take a few shots. Uh, secondly, it has uh, the intimidation factor. When people see that coming, they know they're in trouble. They're a bad guy. Third, uh, the weapon systems, obviously. You got your 25 millimeter cannon, which uh, packs a heck of a punch. You have your uh, coax, which is 7.62 machine gun, and the thermal sights, which uh, give you that extra advantage that the enemy doesn't necessarily have in uh, the current operating environment. It's a very strong vehicle, very fast if it needs to be. And it's also all terrain, track vehicle, so you don't have to worry about going over um, anything really that uh, can pop a tire. It is very good because you can come in, you can um, provide cover while you dismount your troops when they can uh, cord on and search. And you can also support your troops with your, uh, your guns that are up top. It's, it's really good because of um, muddy situations. Uh, you get a little bit more traction. You don't have to worry about nails in the road. You don't have to worry about uh, brass or ammo. Uh, it, it can go over almost anything. The M2 Bradley is an outstanding infantry fighting vehicle, but it has several shortcomings. One of the biggest is its track road system. It slows the vehicle down, and it's exceptionally noisy, especially on paved roads. A dangerous problem in urban operations. That's why the next generation of infantry fighting vehicles has moved to eight wheels. The LAV-3 is the latest derivative of the combat-proven U.S. Marine Corps LAV-25 infantry fighting vehicle. Built in Canada by General Dynamics Land Systems, the LAV-3 has been an exceptionally successful infantry fighting vehicle. Currently, it is used in several variations by countries such as Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United States. The LAV-3 eight-wheeled IFV. Weight, 16.9 tons. Crew, three. Troop carrying capacity, seven. Armor, steel plating with ceramic applique armor. Primary armament, one M242 25 millimeter chain gun. Secondary armament, one C6 7.62 millimeter coaxial machine gun, and one pintle mount C9 A2 5.56 millimeter machine gun. Engine, Caterpillar 3,126 diesel, producing 350 horsepower. Operational range, 450 kilometers or 250 miles. Top speed, 100 kilometers or 62 miles per hour. Built 
in Canada. The Lab 3 and its variants have been incredibly successful. But there is a new variant of the Lab that is considered by many to be the best infantry fighting vehicle in the world. Hohenfels, Germany, home to one of the largest U.S. Army training bases in Europe. Here, coalition forces are preparing for future deployment to Afghanistan. This annual training is known as Exercise Cooperative Spirit. The acronym for these forces is APCA, which represents five armies optimizing coalition interoperability. These armies include American, British, Canadian, Australian, and New Zealand. Together, these coalition partners refine tactical skills, doctrine, and a full spectrum of land operations. This is training that is critical for these soldiers on the deadly battlefields of Afghanistan. The American Army has brought to Germany one of the latest and most modern infantry fighting vehicles in the world, the Stryker. Based on the popular Lav 3 design, the Stryker was created specifically for the U.S. Army. It's considered by many to be the best coalition IFV in battle. Stryker 8 wheeled IFV. Weight, 18.7 tons. Crew, two. Troop carrying capacity, nine. Armor, steel plating. Primary armament, M2 50 caliber machine gun or MK19 40 millimeter grenade launcher mounted in a remote weapon station. Secondary armament, M240 7.62 millimeter machine gun. Engine, Caterpillar C7 with 350 horsepower. Top speed, 100 kilometers or 62 miles per hour. Operational range, 500 kilometers or 300 miles. Built in Canada, and the United States of America. It is a phenomenally flexible vehicle, and uh, with its 10 different variants, uh, you've got commonality, uh, parts, so logistically, it's very easy to maintain. Uh, it's wheeled vehicle, so it's a lot cheaper to operate, and it still affords a good level of protection to the soldiers riding inside it. And the thing I found when I was in employed status is, you could get right up on top of a target and they'd never know you were coming because it's extremely quiet. It's easier as a, as a leader to command and control when you know your troops can get to you or get to where you want them to go uh, in a moment's notice. So it, it allows for armament as well as uh, maneuverability. So it's uh, essentially a floating box hole moving around the battlefield. Infantry fighting vehicles were originally designed to work with large mechanized formations, taking on Soviet armor. However, warfare and battlefields have evolved a lot since the days of the Cold War. Modern realities have created a shift in combat tactics, creating new threats and new dangers. First of all, if you take a look at demographics, the majority of the world's populations are moving more and more towards urban environments. So gone are the days where you're gonna have uh, Rommel and Montgomery fighting in an open desert. I really don't see that happening. Today's infantry fighting vehicles are being retrofitted with reactive armor and other defensive measures to counter RPGs. Provide improved protection against mines and IEDs. Their battle worth has not changed. But the threats have. So technology and innovation are helping to mitigate the dangers posed by these new threats. 
helping IFV survive in battle. Infantry fighting vehicles have proven their worth in battle. Mobility, protection, firepower. IFVs are an effective and safe means of transporting infantry into battle. And soldiers have come to love them. Hey, they're a lifesaver. If you get somebody that's pinned down or you can't get to a, an enemy, heavy armor moves up, takes that enemy out for you. So for, for example, if, you're, uh, if your squad or your platoon's pinned down in an alley and there's no way that you can't get to that shooter, right, by, by uh, he has a better position than you, you call in that heavy armor and they can, they can go in there and take that shooter out and free up your, free up your platoon, your squad. Big lifesaver, big lifesaver. I've seen him many times. Without a doubt, the Bradley Viding vehicle is one of the toughest in the world. The role of the infantry fighting vehicle is often misunderstood. They're not light tanks with passenger seats, nor are they a mobile pillbox from which the infantry can fight. Infantry fighting vehicles provide incredible cross-country mobility. They afford protection against snipers and shell fragments. Their weapon systems provide a significant punch that helps support dismounted infantry. For soldiers going into battle, they provide comfort, safety, and peace of mind. Important factors in battlefield morale. Infantry fighting vehicles are the armored chariots of battle. <laughs> 